Hello and greetings. My name is Tony Hang from PDOC Films, PDOC Podcast. I'm excited to be here again tonight to present with you guys another episode of the Omaha Grain Belt Auction Breeders. Today we're going to be concentrating. We're going to meet John, or else as John the Greek, from South Carolina today. We actually was able to capture him while he is on his way to the Hoosier race this weekend. So we're going to do a short interview to learn more about who he is, his birds, and what he's bringing to Omaha this year. Once again, I want to thank everybody for listening tonight. If you get a chance, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel as we present many more things to come in the future. And like us on Facebook. Find us at PDOC Films or PDOC Podcast. With further ado, let's get John on the line. Hey, John, can you hear me? Are you there? Hey, Tony, I'm here. How are you doing you. today, John? I'm doing good, Tony. How are you? I'm doing great, man. And you're, you're on your way to Hoosier, is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm on the highway. Oh, man, that's great. 65 North, head, heading to Indiana. <laughs> Wait, where well, it's going to be a great show. I, I think, I believe you were there last year, too. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, that's, uh, I, I wish I had the opportunity to come out there. I know it's a great time, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that you uh, were able to spend a little time with us. Before we get started, John, I just want to thank you for your time. I know you're a very busy man, especially right now. You're even traveling to a different destination. But just want to give you a, a warm welcome. Thank you so much for your time as we do this short interview to let everybody know a little bit about John. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Thank you for your efforts for doing this. Not a problem. You know, it's uh, uh you know, and, and for everyone listening, I was uh, I've, I've known John for quite a few years. We started off as Facebook friends, and we've met each other several times, and it's it's been a blast. And I'm so excited that the pigeon sport and the pigeon hobby has brought different types of people together. And if it wasn't for pigeons, I would have never met John. And uh, so I'm very excited. But be, be, but beyond that, let's let's uh, let's start talking about who John is. John, can you tell everybody a little bit how you how about yourself, how you got into birds, and uh, where where you are right now with the racing pigeons? Can you explain a little bit about who you are? Yes, yes, yes. I will do. I will do. Uh, well, I started with the pigeons in uh, when I was a kid back home in Greece, back in the uh, like eighties, eighty two, eighty three. Uh, that's the years that we started having some high flyers over there. And, uh, when I moved to United States in 1984, just everything stopped, you know, we just, you know, uh, well, uh, I kept visiting Greece and I kept looking at the birds and, you know, once you get with pigeons, you just never can get them out of your life. You know, always back in your mind, you think about the pigeons. So, well, in 2004, I started back in the United States with uh, some nose divers that I got uh, from here, from the United States. Uh, those uh, those pigeons, they all, uh, they're like high flyers. They'll go up, and you got to flag them, and they'll keep going higher and higher and higher, and they'll go almost out of sight. And with the... Uh, when you show droppers, they'll dive. They'll go like, you know, 70, 80 miles an hour sometimes a hundred uh they'll dive down to the ground and uh it's just a show but it only lasts a few seconds you know so uh that's what i started with and uh 2009 that's when i first started acquiring some homing pigeons so that's where uh, that's where everything started 2010 i started uh racing in the club and uh Here's where I'm at today. I mean, uh, just uh, crazy, crazy sport. Now, John, you mentioned that you were you started out kind of club racing and whatnot. Are you currently still club racing right now? Yes, I'm still club racing. I, I hate to say that, but this is the first. Uh, this past weekend was the first weekend I didn't fly. And uh, I had a couple of mishaps happen at the house with the uh, uh, with the uh, club electronic clock and dancing live and the pads. I did something and I just burned the whole setup. So, and also we're going out of town to the Hoosier, so I won't be flying this week and next week. So I just told the club, I, you know, I'm not going to fly the rest of the year. My fly when I come back, 
I don't know. I got to see how the birds are acting. And uh, if they're ready, if I can get back into training, I'll fly again. But, yeah, I've been flying every year since 2011. Okay. and Young, you- young birds and old birds. Okay, awesome, and and I I can see why. I mean, this this week you got a full schedule with the Hoosier. Next week you're going to be you're driving to Omaha. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Driving to Omaha. Yeah. Okay, so it's it's going to be a tight schedule for the whole next two weeks. That's going to be a lot of pigeon fun. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Now, um, let's talk about your your family of birds, John. And can you tell me a little bit uh, how you originate with these birds? I mean, when you first started, do, are some of those birds, when you first started, are they still a part of your backbone birds, or how did you develop that? Well, here's what I started. I started flying in the club, and several birds start, you know, doing better than others. And uh, then I started... You know, I started watching this one love racing game all over the place. And uh, I was watching the, you know, Wind Companion and uh, I've been looking and see what's going on. I said, man, this is fun. So I started contacting some of those one love race guys that have been, were doing good. Actually, the first uh, the first one love race guy that I contacted back then, it was uh, Johnny Milka. I remember to this day. I just picked up the phone, found his number, dialed right up. Hey, how are you doing? Hello, oh, that's awesome. This? <laughs> uh, hey, Joe, how are you doing? I'm like, yeah, whatever, you know. And uh, it was funny because I just, you know, picked up the phone and started calling people and learning a little bit about it. And and I got some birds from Joe and Milka, and, you know, I've done good with them. And then Joe brought me to uh, Kerry Tilson. He's like, you know, he's on your neck of the woods. Maybe you should call him and see what you can get and you can guys can get together. And so, yes, yeah, sure enough, I call Kerry, same thing. Hey, what's up? I'm John. How are you doing? And, uh, you know, I got some birds from Kerry and some of those birds I got from Kerry, they're in the very, very back of my foundation line, uh, of pedi- in the pedigree. So, uh, like I said, I just went, you know, I didn't go, I'm an example. I'm not going to say, you know, I didn't just go on people, start buying pigeons. I start talking people, picking over their brains and, you know, what I like to do and what, what what's good, best for me to do. Because I knew pigeons. I just didn't know racing pigeons. So uh, that helps, you know. Uh, so I started getting some 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 one of races and start bringing some birds back and breeding them and started doing good. Uh, 2014 uh, was a good, great year for me. I did really good uh, in a couple of one of races and won some money and brought the birds back and started breeding them and so on. And, you know, I bought some more birds. Uh, there's, uh, you know, so there is not one family of birds in my pedigrees. Not, you know, you say Hopkins and balloons. I don't have none of that. I don't have a, a family of those birds. I was just looking for performance pigeons. Who was clocking, what they were clocking, and see how can I get them. Uh, so, um, you know... I bought young Picasso. I mean, I bought Picasso, and then I bought young Picasso. I mean, I bred young Picasso. Uh, I bought Supercrack 135. Uh, bought Bulldozer. Uh, I got some eggs from Kerry Tilson. But super, super eggs. That they're foundation for me right now. Uh, most of the pigeons are not good. You know, there's a small percentage that are good. So you can keep on finding those and keep on breeding them. It would just keep on going forward, you know, with some good luck. Uh, so it's been, it's been, uh, it's been a blessed uh, years for me in the, in the racing pigeons. It's been doing really good. You know, John, you, you said something that uh, is, is very, very motivating when you said that you just didn't go out there and start buying pigeons. You actually did research, you learned 
And one thing you said that uh, really that that really attracts me to put a big bulb in my in my head here is, you said you had a vision, you had a goal. I think that a lot of us uh, we we have to also think about that and we have to evaluate. Now, you talked a little bit about you had a goal and a vision, and then you went in and you just didn't go buy birds. You researched them, you talked to the breeders, and then you cultivated the best. And I think that is such an awesome way to prepare your breeding team. Now. Can you tell us a little bit about, just a little bit, when you prepare your birds to send out, can you tell us how you prepare your birds to send out, like your young birds? The young birds, like, okay. Like one loft? One loft birds. I, once the birds are 30, 35 days old, I start looking at them. I sit there and spend hours just looking at the birds. Now, I have, you know, let's say one section where it's mostly for one loaf raising pigeons and then another section for fraternities and club flying. So when I'm ready to send, for example, to, you know, California classic, uh, I know time frames. I already pre-planned that, you know, and I start looking at the birds. I know I, I handle, I know what I like, you know, they got to have nice bodies, good handling, good vents, but I sit and look, especially how the birds act. Like I see, I see one that sticks out. I mark it. I say, okay, number 77, I want to send it, you know, I, I, I want to focus on Hoosier or a Crooked River or Blue Bucket. I, I, I want number 77 to go to the race that I believe is going to be good for, you know, there's good competition, good money, good payout. So, I also look, not just pick up six birds and put them in a basket because they're out of such and such pedigree, you know? That makes sense? Totally. Make, makes total sense. So the observation of the birds is, is the key thing that you do, spending time with the birds and evaluating them. Num- number one, observe and, and watch. See, that's what uh, a lot of people can say, okay, number, you know, 220 and Thomas Jr. breeding good pigeons at Creek River. So whatever they breed, I'm going to send them all over there. See, I don't, I I go by that, but I also look at the birds and decide if I if if those pairs are good for those kind of races that I like, I send them. If I don't like them, I'll send them to a fraternity or I fly them in the club. You know, uh, something not important. You know, as much send them to you know something that is it's it's a 50 dollar entry you know what i mean a smaller scale a smaller yeah. scale okay or or fly them at the club now that that gives me that leaves me one question john so i know that yeah. you fly birds and then you do one loft do you believe that the one loft birds are different than club birds can you what what's your take on that <laughs> that's just, that's uh that's the number one uh question there Tony. <laughs> 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 I had to ask. I had to ask. Well, uh, here's what it is. There's people that say the good birds fly in both. Okay? And there's also people that say there's one loft birds and there's, you know, club uh, flying birds. Uh, but, you know, there's people believe different things. I, I fly my birds in both scenarios. I fly... The, the same pigeons, the family, I should say, the, 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 the same family that I did good with in the club, there's a lot of those pigeons that are still winning in one of races today. So there are some families that are able to do both. If you can find them, it's the best thing, the best thing there is. But there's families, there's people that fly backyard club pigeons for years, and they've been tearing up the competition. And then... They hear about the all of racing, and here, oh, hell, I know. I, they take twenty birds and put them in the race and can't do nothing, and they, they really, they're very, very uh, sad. They say, "How can this be? Oh, this is not a good thing." All of racing, they say, is not good because those pigeons should win. Well, those pigeons will win with his care. All of pigeons, you know, everybody gets the same treatment, fed, watered. You don't watch and see. There's no motivation. 
everybody goes in the truck and goes to the race. There's no ifs or buts, you know. So some birds can, you know, can be successful in both uh, scenarios, but most of them are not. They will not do both. Yeah, man, that's that's a great point. I I think I also agree with that. And you're right, man. If you can find that family that can do it both ways, I mean, that's that's a gold mine, man. That's great. Now, John, uh, before before I let you go here, I do have some questions about what you're bringing to Omaha. Now, this will be your second year coming to Omaha. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So this year, um, let's talk about some of the birds that you're offering. And everybody that's listening, you can view all the birds that he's got on newipigeon.com. However, all the pedigrees are on uh, Omaha Grain Belt website. But, John, can you tell us a little bit about what the birds you're offering and uh, a little bit just talk about who they are, their race history and whatnot, or who their parents are? Can you tell us about that? Okay. Uh, the birds are, are up. Uh, I think they should be up by now, all of them, or maybe there's just a few still pending. But they should be up on iPigeon, and uh, they're uh, they can be uh, they can bid on. Uh, what uh, what am I bringing? Is I took birds that I've been had good uh, results with, mostly on off racing because that's what most people are after. So people that flew, raised good, or bred good pigeons, I put them together, or inbred, because some people like inbreeding more, so out of uh, full siblings, or half siblings to winners, or breeders or winners, so there's no pigeons there that nobody knows about, or I just bought one from, you know, from some big uh, famous name, just put it together, and hopefully something will happen. These are pigeons that their parents bred winners. 300, 350 mile winners, top champion birds, uh, birds that are proven to do well. Now, when you buy pigeons, you know, everybody knows it. And if they don't, it's too bad. You know, there's so many good pigeons bred, you know. Uh, so, you buy it, and you got a chance to get a good one, but you also get a chance to get a no good one. So there's birds out there. There's some, you know, some are more important than others, and that's affect the pricing of the birds. So they're up there. Anybody has any questions, they can text me, message me, email me, or call me, and we will, you know, answer. I have videos of all the birds. Every one of those birds, I have a little video clip on my phone. So I can text them and, you know, a little more information, not a problem. Well, you guys have heard it uh, firsthand, guys. If there's uh, any questions reviewing pedigrees or questions about family of birds, John is available in multiple ways. You can contact him through Facebook, text, and uh, phone. So make sure to, if you guys have any questions, uh, make sure to get them to them before the actual uh, auction and site. And not only that, John will be present at the Omaha Grain Belt. So if there's any further questions, we can even uh, contact you there. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Beautiful. Now, John, I always ask this for everybody that uh, I, I interview, but if you were to give one beginner's tip, okay, just one tip to the beginners today, what would that be, John? Okay. Spent as much as you can afford to buy a few good pigeons. That's the thing. Don't go buy 40 pigeons because they're $1 each and something will happen. But also, you don't need to spend $20,000 to find you your new breeder. So, whatever you can afford, start. Whatever you can afford, couple good pairs from a proven loft and start building your family. If you don't have a family of pigeons, you just will never survive. Uh, perfect example, we have six generations of winners from the same family of birds. Six generations. So, this is not luck. Uh, it's, you know, yes, luck, we'll take luck any day, but you got to build your own family and start breeding and keep on moving forward. Well, thank you, John, for your time. 
once again, I, I really appreciate uh, you being with us today. I know you're traveling a lot this week and next week, but you know, giving the viewers a little bit of taste of what is to come. And everybody, once again, um, John will be uh, available at the Grain Belt. He's also available by text and phone if you guys have any further questions about his family of birds. But if there's anything else, I will also be there live to present and take videos and pictures and answer questions at Omaha. But, John, once again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I'll definitely let you go. But uh, once again, thank you. Thank you, Tony, and good luck to everybody in the races to come. Thanks, John. You have a good night. Thank you. You too. So there you have it. We have completed our interview with John the Greek. I hope you have enjoyed this session as much as I have. John has been a blast to me. If you guys get a chance to go to Omaha Grain Belt, I highly recommend it. John will be there, and uh, he will answer any other questions that you guys have personally, and we will also be there to also answer any questions that you guys have for us. Once again, check everything out at www.omahagrainbelt.com. You can check all the birds out at newipigeon.com as well under the Omaha Grain Belt section where you guys can see the birds, the pedigrees, and whatnot. All the information is also located on the website where they have all the pedigrees listed. Once again, my name is Tony Hang. You guys have a great time. We are checking out. Take care and good night.